for questions. We'll move to member's statement. I'll recognize the member for Scarborough Rouge Park. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to dedicate my member statement today to the leaders and volunteers at Muslim Welfare Canada. A few weeks ago, I joined the volunteers at Muslim Welfare Canada and Essential First Canada to prepare hygiene kits to earthquake victims in Turkey and Syria. It was truly a humbling experience to join the volunteers who took off their time from their weekend to assemble these kids. Madam Speaker, this is just one of the many examples of the Muslim Welfare Canada's great work that they have been doing for the last 30 years. Muslim Welfare Canada was established in 1993 by Major Ali Abbas and Sarwar Jahan Begum. This organization began as a small halal food bank in Scarborough, Ontario, under the banner of Muslim Welfare Centre of Toronto. Today, Muslim Welfare Canada is involved in the fight against poverty and homelessness. It focuses on providing food, healthcare services, culturally sensitive shelter for women and their children, and healthy nutrition to school-age children and seniors. Madam uh, Speaker, one of the most notable projects, and one of my favorite projects by Muslim Welfare Canada is their annual fill a backpack event. Muslim Welfare Canada not only supports the communities uh, locally, but also focus on projects internationally by promoting uh, literacy through free schools, access to clean water, and providing relief assistance. M Madam Speaker, Muslim Welfare Canada's dedication uh, to supporting Canadians and beyond is a true example that we can make a difference when we come together. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Member for Toronto, Danforth. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, as you know, there are many parts to the housing crisis that people face in this province. I want to talk this morning about the soaring rents that people are facing and the crushing burdens that it places on them. Landlords right now can reset the rents at whatever the market will bear when a person leaves a unit. And that means that they do set those rents as high as they possibly can. What's the impact? It means that young people can't move out of their parents' homes when they want to. It means that parents who have a new baby can't afford to rent a new unit because the new units will be far more expensive than the one they're in. It means, Speaker, that there is a huge incentive for landlords to push out tenants so they can put in place huge rent increases. Speaker, I call on the government to bring in real rent control to bring in a system so that rent levels are retained at the point they were set for when a tenant was there and are not increased when someone moves out. The province needs this, people need this, the government needs to act. Thank you. Thank you. Next member's statement, the member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. It's an honour to rise today to share with this Ontario legislator exciting news from Sarnia Lambton. Yesterday, Madam Speaker, the Sarnia Police Service held a special swearing-in ceremony to welcome their new Deputy Chief of Police, Julie Craddock. Deputy Chief Craddock joins the Sarnia Police after establishing an impressive record with the Halton Regional Police Service. She began her career in 1994 with the OPP, joined the Halton Police in 1995, where she worked in criminal investigations, traffic, recruiting, community mobilization and front light operations, rising from the rank of constable to inspector. She is also the very first female and Indigenous Deputy Chief in the Sarnia Police Force history. I'm extremely confident that Deputy Chief Craddock's strong leadership, skills and fresh outlook will help to build on the ongoing work of the entire Sarnia Police Service to protect and serve this community. And while my legislative responsibilities prevented me from attending yesterday's swearing in ceremony, I want to take this opportunity to officially welcome Deputy Chief Craddock to the Sarnia Police Service and the wonderful Sarnia Lampton community. Best wishes to a great future in your new role. Thank you. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Timiskaming and Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. Um, as we all know, a shortage of doctors and shortage of access to primary care is a problem throughout the province, and no more so than in northeastern Ontario. But there are solutions, and solutions that I wish the government would look at a bit more closely and that we're dealing with right now. In the town of Cochrane, uh, there's a 
uh, family health team that has the funding for, I believe, five doctors. But they can't find five doctors. Yeah. They have one. Yeah. <laughs> they would love to be able to switch that to some nurse practitioner funding. While just a few miles away in the town of Iroquois Falls, a nurse practitioner couldn't get funding or approval through OHIP, so she's actually operating a private nurse practitioner practice, mostly for the Mennonite community. She really wants to be part of the system. There is funding not very far away. And yet, we're failing on both sides. We have to look at what we, we're training more doctors. Great, but that's going to take a while. We're looking at doctors from other areas. That's also going to take a while to bring them to the north. Let's look at what we have, what we can work with, and look look for solutions. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Brantford Brant. Thank you, Speaker. Two Saturdays ago, I, uh, on the 25th of February, I was able to participate in Brantford's coldest night of the year walk fundraiser. The coldest night of the year is a family-friendly walk to raise money for local charities serving people experiencing hurt, hunger, and homelessness. In my riding of Brantford, Brant, 181 walkers on 31 teams got together and walked for either two or five kilometers. The coldest night of the year was in support of Why Not Youth Centre in Brantford. At Why Not Youth Centre, they believe that every young person is important and deserves all the help that they can get to overcome their challenges and to meet their goals. Nearly every teen who comes through their door is struggling in some way, be it homelessness, mobility, bullying, or unsafe living conditions. Their team of youth workers are dedicated to working with our local, vulnerable youth to make sure that no one goes unseen or unheard or falls through the cracks in the system. This is why Why Not matters so much, because the only thing that can help change the lives of young people heading towards poverty, homelessness, and total defeat is real, positive, supportive relationships. And that's what, exactly what they do at Why Not. Speaker, some people see things and say, why? They dream of things that never were and say, why not? Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I wanted to take this opportunity uh, to tell you more about the private member's bill that I introduced yesterday because I think it's really important. After the tragic death of Draven Graham last year, I knew something needed to be done. Draven was an 11-year-old boy with autism who passed away in Lindsay, Ontario after leaving his home. My sincerest condolences are with the Graham family during this difficult time. The memory of Draven will live on through his loved ones and all who knew him. Something needed to be done. It was clear that there was a gap that needed to be addressed. This new bill, if passed, would open up the Missing Persons Act 2018 and amend it to include vulnerable persons alert. It is a scary experience when a loved one goes missing, especially someone who is vulnerable, because they may not realize the entirety of the situation they are in and could end up in a dangerous position. I work really closely with families who have children with autism, and they told me what this bill would mean to them. This morning, I was joined by Vice President of the Ontario Autism Coalition, Tony Stravato, and several other families who are supporting this bill, because they know how important it is to have additional protections in place. And This alert would not just extend to children, it would extend to adults as well. Shirley Love, a senior with dementia, passed away in Hamilton in December after she left her home, not dressed for the weather. Someone in her circumstances would be covered under the new alert. The Vulnerable Persons Alert would, if passed, provide police forces with an additional tool to help find people. This bill is one more way that we can protect the ones we love and we know are in a dangerous situation. I hope that every member of this House will support this legislation. Member Statements. 
The member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Speaker. Last week, I had the privilege to join the Premier and the Minister of Health at the Credit Valley Hospital in Mississauga to celebrate a record-breaking historic donation of $75 million to the Trillium Health Partner Foundation from the Mississauga Orlando Corporation, Canada's largest privately owned real estate developer and landowner. I want to thank my friend, Chairman Carlo Fidani, a great Italian-Canadian community leader, for making a single largest corporate donation to a hospital in Canadian history. $75 million will support the complete reconstruction and expansion of the Mississauga Hospital in Mississauga Lakeshore, which will become the largest and most advanced hospital in Canada. It includes $10 million to help build a new urgently needed two-floor mental health inpatient unit and $15 million for a Trillium Institute for Better Health to drive health research and innovation to create a better and stronger health care system for everyone. I want to thank my friend Raman Dua, the founder of Save Max Real Estate, for providing a patient view on what this donation will mean. As the Premier said, our friend Hazel McCallion, Trillium's honorary guardian, was smiling down on us. Speaker, Orlando Corporation will match every dollar donated to the foundation at trilliumgive.ca over the next 10 years. This, will do, this doubles the impact of the contribution up to $150 million. I ask all members to join me in recognizing the Orlando Corporation and their incredible support for the Trillium Health Partners and the Mississauga Hospital. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Don Valley West. Thank you, Speaker. On the eve of International Women's Day, I would like to highlight just a few of the amazing women from my riding of Don Valley West who play a vital role in our community and serve as an in inspiration to those around them, including myself. These are just some of the recent winners of the C Queen's Platinum Jubilee Award. Shaklo Sharapova is the founder of the Autism Support Network in Thorncliffe Park and recently also won the Agnes McVale Award. Shaklo is an important advocate for children and their families seeking support. Lisa Grogan Green is the co chair of the Go Green Youth Centre, an innovative, sustainable, biodiverse recreational space for the Thorncliffe Park and Flemington Park communities. Susan Scandifio, a longtime community volunteer, recognized that about half of the households in Thorncliffe Park and Flemington Park neighbourhoods sit at or below the poverty line, even before COVID hit. So during COVID, Susan helped found a food bank with the neighbourhood organization, which helps address food insecurity for some of these families and now serves over 2,200 households. I want to thank all the incredible women in Don Valley West who work tirelessly to improve our community every day, and I want to recognize and thank all the Queen's Jubilee Award recipients for their dedication to serving the community. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Thank you, Speaker. Ontario is fortunate to have one of the cleanest electricity grids in the world, over 90 percent emissions free. And there's one reason why. Our nuclear sector provided the emissions free electricity to phase out coal fired generation in Ontario, one of the largest greenhouse gas reductions ever. In fact, Bruce Power provided 70 percent of that electricity. Last week, Bruce Power began their second refurbishment on Unit 3, which is part of the life extension program that will allow the Bruce site to continue producing clean, reliable, affordable energy through 2064, over 40 years from today. Bruce Power supports good jobs, 22,000 indirect and direct jobs, employing some of the best paying and highest skilled workers in Ontario. Bruce Power's head office is in my colleague Lisa Thompson's riding at Huron, Bruce, but the refurbishment program has meant suppliers like BWXT and Makwa Call are setting up shop in my riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound, greatly supporting the local economy. In addition, Bruce Power and its partners, including the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, are commercially producing life-saving medical isotopes like lutetium-177 on a scale never seen before thanks to their innovative new isotope delivery system. 
clean energy to help our climate goals, good job support Ontario, innovations to help global uh, health care. Thank you, Bruce Power, and all your workers for the great job. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Don Valley North. Thank you, Speaker. We know that it has been difficult for international trained professionals, such as professional engineers, to become licensed in Ontario. Ontario is committed to reducing rate tap to increase the province's competitiveness, strengthen supply chain, and make it easier to interact with services. The licensing and regulating body for professional engineering is introducing changes to its license application process. Thus, we are make applying for an engineering license more efficient, transparent, and fair. Speaker, starting May 15, 2023, PES application process will ensure new applicants receive a registration decision within six months. It will also launch an improved online application system on July 1, 2023. The new application rules for obtaining a PEO license compliance with new requirements set by the provincial government under the fair access to regulated provisions and compulsory trades act. This change is welcome new for those seeking license through the PEO. It is also a great news for our province as we seek to attract and retain skilled talent that we count on to help build and grow Ontario. Speaker, by removing unnecessary burden and barriers, Ontario leads the way to innovation, flexibility, and progress. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning. I beg to inform the House.